I greet you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Wonderful to see you here in All Saints, and I welcome those who are following from home as well. On this Wednesday, following the third Sunday in Advent, as we meet together here in All Saints for a said Eucharist. The Lord be with you. So as we meet together, let's pray together our bidding prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us remember our humanity, which means that we are imperfect and we fail God and we fail ourselves and we fail each other from time to time. So let us give thanks that when the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. So in the light of Christ, let us together confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we pray our collect for this Advent season day. Let us pray. God for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ our Lord. And now our first reading is some verses from Psalm 85, beginning at the 7th verse. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they may not turn to folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give all that is good and our land will yield its evil. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now I invite you to stand, if you will, for the reading from the Holy Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. So John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has 
sent us to you to ask, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? Jesus had just then cured many people of diseases, plagues and evil spirits and had given sight to those who were blind. And he answered them, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The question that John posed to be asked to Jesus, and Luke repeats it, tells us twice, just in case we forgot what that question was going to be. Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Now, maybe part of you, part of me, part of us would think it's quite a reasonable question to just ask it a bit of clarification. But then remember, this is John, the very same John, who was in the desert, shouting for all to hear, prepare the way of the Lord. After me, there's someone coming, I'm not even fit to untie his sandals. And then Jesus came, and John said he'd rather be baptized by him, and Jesus said, let it be so for the present. And so they did. And God was so pleased, so proud, that the heavens opened and the dove came down and God himself declared, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Pretty definite proof, isn't it? And yet, so two-ish years later, John was in prison. Jesus was doing his stuff, with has been told, curing, healing, preaching, teaching and making himself very, very unpopular with the established church. John, imprisoned, tortured, maltreated. Now in a situation like that, I think, I think it's probably natural. You try and put ourselves in that place, very difficult. But surely in a position like that, it's quite natural to think, gosh, all those miracles going around, how about one? One teeny little, teeny, teeny little miracle, Lord. Just, you know, strike those jailers down. Crack that door open. And of course it didn't happen. And in that despair, and in that pain, and no doubt, maybe some disciples coming in and saying, yeah, sure this is right, John. Surely if he's the son of God, he could get you out of here. So in a time like that, even John had questions to ask of God. So, what is this to do with us in this third week of Advent? When we lit the candle on Sunday and it's lit again now to remember John the Baptist. What it has to do with us is to remind us two things. The first, that it is normal, it is natural, it's inevitable, it's part of being human, to have doubts at one time or another. It's normal, it's natural to question. And John proved that. So that's one part of it. So if we have doubts, and if we have questions, we shouldn't try to push them away much more important is to follow the example of John and when we have a question get it to the person who might be able to answer it and in his case he couldn't go himself so he sent his disciples to find out ask Jesus himself rather than well he didn't have Mr Google did he 
so he had to go to the doctor. He, he wasn't able to, to diagnose his illness himself in those days. Yeah, look, maybe there's a message there for us. Sometimes, even better than Mr. Google, is to ask the person who might be able to give us a clear answer. But anyway, let's leave Google and the internet for another day. In, in the new year, we can tackle that one. Let's stick to us and our dads. So, there's the first part, that it is normal and natural to have dads. But now we move with John, sending his disciples to Jesus, to the second part. When we have doubts, when we have fears, when we have uncertainties, the first thing to do is share them. Share them with someone we trust. Jesus was still the person who John trusted. And Jesus didn't say, oh, go back and tell John not to be such a silly. Because, of course, John couldn't see all that Jesus was doing. John would be consumed by the suffering that he was enduring in, in, in the jail. And so Jesus said, go back and tell John what you see with your eyes. That the blind are seeing, the lame are walking. All these good things are happening. All signs that the Son of Man has come to save the world. We're in the dark days before Christmas. You know, those people who, who set Christmas at the end of December. Even if we don't know when Jesus was born, and we don't, it's a pretty good time in our hemisphere, of course. You know, just think about it in the southern hemisphere where they're, they're in the middle of summer. But for us, it's a very appropriate time. Because in Advent, as we reflect and slowly light the candles, going around the circle until we end up in the middle with the triumphant uh, Christmas candle. In these dark days, of course it's more normal to have worries. Even without COVID, it's normal to have worries. But now it is a time when in the short days, the cold days, the dark days, our doubts, which maybe we can forget when the weather's good, come to the forefront. It's normal, John tells us, John shows us. And so, the key is to share. To share in faith and in trust. And the PS, don't always expect a happy ending. John died in faith, but he died a cruel death for his faith. But his faith was intact. So there we have it. Are you the one who is to come? Or are we to wait for another? No, we're not to wait for another. The one who was to come came. He died for us that our sins might be forgiven. So in faith, let's keep following the light as it goes on Sunday to the candle for joy. And then the following Friday, Saturday, we will light the candle. The candle that confirms that Jesus is the Son of God, the one who was to come. We don't need to wait for another. Amen. And now we will say our prayers of intercession. And now let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Dear loving Heavenly Father, as, as we wait in this season of Advent, we pray that we may learn from the example of John the Baptist who truly prepared the way of the Lord and even in imprisonment and eventual death did not lose faith. At this time when we are worried and anxious because of things beyond our control and influence, may we show the faith of John the Baptist. May we wait with him, happy 
that your son was, is, and forever will be the one who was to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we give you thanks for our fellowship here in All Saints. We thank you that we were able to hold our Christmas tree festival and that so many people were able to come and to relax together and share together and be together. And now we pray for your guidance as we plan the events of the coming days. May we do all that is safe and possible as we celebrate the preparations for and then the birth of your Son, our Saviour. Guide us and show us your way, Lord, for without you we cannot see. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for ourselves and for our families and our friends at this time of great uncertainty and anxiety. We give you thanks for all that we have in our lives. And we pray for those who are much less fortunate than we are. We pray for those who at this time feel hopeless. Those who are homeless. Racked with depression and anxiety. We pray for those for whom the freedom of, of thought and actions is something about which they can only dream. Refugees living in squalor, hoping for a better tomorrow. Lord, we pray that they may feel your peace surrounding them as freely as we are able to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we remember those who we have known and loved who are with us no longer. This morning we give you thanks that we have had the privilege to know Doug Cowan. We pray now that his rest with you may be eternal and we commend his spirit to your mercy. And we pray for Jenny and for Christine, his daughter, at this time of great sadness for them. We pray that Jenny may get the care that she needs to be comfortable and to be relaxed. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And now we remember those whose anniversaries of death fall at this time and whose names are inscribed in our memorial book. So by name we commend to your mercy Julia Florence Burchill Davies, John Edward Cracknell, Joan Ellen Christine Aston, Anne Jane Williams, Thomas William Host and Diane E. Hughes. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And now gathering together all of your prayers, our spoken prayers and the prayers of our hearts. We pray together. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by our cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of God be always with you and also with you I wave to you a silent peace please share the peace with the way and to those following at home 
Peace be with you also. And now we prepare the table for the Eucharist. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and then, as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that you betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. I will come to you and bring the Eucharist in one time. For those of you at home, please, I commend to you the prayer of the act of spiritual healing. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the heavenly gift. Kindle in us the fire of your Spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those who you love, wherever they may be, 
today and always. Amen. So just before I disappear, let me repeat my thanks to you for being here and especially to Andre who is going to sing for us again in a moment. Andre, it is such a blessing to have you back. I heard you last week when I was in the frozen north for a funeral and you worshipped without me and I, I thought I heard the voice of angels in all saints. So Andre, thank you so much for coming back and uh, enriching our worship at our Wednesday Eucharist. And the other person I want to thank is here. You've been thanked twice in your absence, Sue, at Sunday worship, but Sue's here today. So we can thank you to your eyes for the incredible work that you, I know you say you're just leading a team and you were, but you do it superbly and we really appreciate all the work you have done for the Christmas Tree Festival and for all our other events as well. So Sue, from all of us, thank you very much indeed. So we will, by the grace of God, we'll be back worshipping in church again on Sunday. And with luck, we will light our fourth Advent candle on the fourth Sunday of Advent. But that's Sunday. There are days to go before then. So whatever you're going to be doing in the intervening time, go in peace, love and serve the Lord. Amen. And I omitted to say, if you'd like, there's coffee after the service in the blue car. Thank you.